Welcome to Catholic Life as we spotlight ordinary people with extraordinary faith. I'm Dina Dow, your host, and I'm so happy to have one of my favorite people on this show uh, this week is uh, Mr. Andy Kling. Andy is a principal here in the Diocese of Baton Rouge at St. Elizabeth Interparochial School here and our diocese. And I'm so excited to have you um, on. This is the third in the series of Catholic schools, focusing on the gift of Catholic schools. So I thought it'd be fun to have the perspective of a principal on, um, since we always take our principles for granted. <laughs> <laughs> and so it's just a joy to share this time with you. So thanks for being with us today. Well, thank you for having me. We we have some great principles in, yeah. in our diocese. So for you to invite me is is an honor. Yeah, uh, yeah. If I could have them all on, yeah, <laughs> I would totally do that. Some of them would be like, no, 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 no. <laughs> Let's talk about your background. Like, how how did you get into education? I mean, did you grow up in this area? Did you, you know, what, what called you to go into education? In the first so I, I grew up um, in and outside of Baton Rouge, so to speak. Uh, so um, I was baptized and uh, at St. Alphonsus Church in Greenwood Springs. Um, served as a altar boy there. We moved to Geismar before I started high school. And uh, so I then went to uh, St. John of Prairieville, which I'm ah, yeah. you know, still a parishioner there today. Um, and, uh, and so confirmed there and still living in Geismar, married to my wife, Jody, for 21 years. We have two boys, Parker and Paxton. Uh, and, um, you know, involved in, in several ministries with, uh, with St. John. And, uh, you know, when the opportunity came for, uh, for me to put in for principal at St. Elizabeth, I did, and here we are. Here we are today. So you graduated education. What was your experience mm -hmm. before you became principal? So before I became a principal, um, my, I, 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 I tell the story this way. My intent for my life was to be an athletic trainer. Uh, I got involved in that in high school at East Ascension as a student. And, uh, was able to uh, earn a scholarship to college, graduated with a bachelor's from LSU, uh, and um, then began practicing athletic training, was assistant athletic trainer at Rhodes College in Memphis for, for oh, a wow. bit. Yeah. Um, after grad school there, moved home and uh, started substituting at, uh, at what was then a little elementary school around the corner from the house. Uh -huh. and, uh, and the principal called me and said, hey, we, we have a, a PE job, do you want it? Um, and, uh, and so I accepted the job, and, and the whole time I'm telling her, this is just temporary. I'm, I'm looking <laughs> for a, uh, a college athletic training job or maybe even a high school athletic training job. Um, you know, so I'm not gonna be here that long. Right. <laughs> and uh, started dating uh, my wife, who was a first grade teacher there, wow. and, um, and 17 years later, uh, <laughs> I had a, a, a full-fledged career in, in education. And so, uh, so through that whole time, mm -hmm. it, you know, that principal that hired me was, was also pouring into me and, um, and encouraging me to, uh, to consider administration. Oh, you, wow. you know, Andy, you would be, you would be a great administrator. You, you, you know, you, you have the qualities, you have, you know, this and that. And, and so she continued to encourage me, even, even though I was telling her, look, this is, this is just yeah. temporary, right? <laughs> and, um, and so God began to work in my life through, yeah. through her voice mm -hmm. and, and through my own family. We had our first child, Parker. Uh, and so uh, it began to be a struggle for me, balancing uh, the father that I wanted to be and the husband that I wanted to be with, you know, the ball field and, and ah, being gotcha. at school. Yeah. And, uh, and so for me, we made the decision that I was going to go back to grad school oh. and get a master's in education. And then, uh, so I did that a year later, I wound up in a, uh, <laughs> I say I wound up in a doctorate program. Oh, and, yeah. uh, and so finished that, um, around 2015. Mm -hmm. And then, uh, from Dutchtown Primary, I left and went to Gonzales Middle. And so 
I have a total of, of 20 years in wow. Ascension Public Schools. Yeah. And, um, and I'm going to tell you that um, that was a great time for me. Yeah. You know, to be able to give 20 years to the district that I feel like in some part made me who I am, yeah. Yeah. You, you know, because not only was uh, I a teacher in that district, I was a student in that district. Yeah. And that meant a lot to me. Yeah. Um, but again, God began to tug at my heart. Um, and, and I find it, uh, uh, I treasure hearing God in other people's voices. So mm -hmm. just as that principal, uh, when I first started teaching, you know, began to encourage me. Um, I had another administrator um, towards the end of my career in Ascension that, that began to encourage me to, uh, to look for things outside of mm -hmm. Ascension. And, uh, and St. Elizabeth was the, the yeah. first thing I found. And yeah. I was like, that's me. I'm going to put in for that. Yeah. And, uh, and the whole time just, you, you know, giving it to God. Um, and, uh, and, and lo and behold, through, through prayer and, and hard work, yeah. you know, I became the principal at, at Gonzale, at, uh, at St. Elizabeth. It sounds like the, there's a process of discernment in there too. I love the way we start out thinking we're going to be called to one thing, mm -hmm. maybe doing it for a little while. And all oh, of a yeah. sudden we find ourselves 20 years oh, later, yeah. like, wait, how did, how did I get yeah. to this point in my yeah. life? Yeah. God, God's plan for me was not my plan for right. me, but, right. but here's what God did do. I, I, I wholly believe that God used athletic training as a vessel to get oh, yeah. me into yeah. education. Yeah. Um, I wouldn't be in education now if mm -hmm. I had not studied athletic training. Yeah. Uh, as a, as, as a young adult. Gotcha, yeah. What's the role of a principal in a school? Now, we, we always kind of assume we think we know what the role of a principal is, <laughs> but it's different being an educator in a classroom, you know? Well, and, and I will even say this. I guess, that, how many hats do you wear? Yeah, that's another thing. But uh, what's the role? Like, what are our principals? I don't, I don't know. That, I mean, I don't know that we can put a, a, a number on, on the hats. <laughs> um, because first and foremost, uh, I mean, it's not, it's not just about the principal. But the school is successful because of the principal and everyone underneath yeah. the principal yeah. from the front office staff to the teachers to the support staff. Um, everyone is essential yeah. in, uh, in contributing to the success of the school. And, um, but, uh, but to get back to the, 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 the nature of the question and, and what is the role, the role of the principal is to ensure that the mission of the school is is intact and and is uh, is is being followed, yeah. you know. And you know, for us at at Saint Elizabeth, you know, our mission has three pillars. Yeah. Um, and so, our uh, our mission is uh, spiritual growth, yeah. academic excellence, mm -hmm. and caring and safe environment. Those yeah. are our three pillars. Yeah. And, uh, and in fact, I was, uh, I was on the phone with a parent earlier this week uh, who is coming over from public school. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and I forgot exactly the question that was asked, but I specifically remember my answer being that our number one priority is faith. Yeah. It, and so if you're looking for a school that prioritizes academics first. Mm. We're, we're not the place for right. you. Um, not to say that we think academics are less important right. than any other school that prioritizes academics, mm -hmm. but our main job is to instill our Catholic faith mm -hmm. in our students. Right. And, uh, and don't get me wrong, Academics is almost as important. Right. Yeah. Because there's a good amount of rigor in that. <laughs> right. Right. And uh, and I mean, we spend the majority of our time in academics, right. uh, but that doesn't mean that it's more important than our faith. Yeah. Yeah. And why do you? I know the church's mission. The church's mission is mm -hmm. to evangelize, mm -hmm. and so through its missionary activity within the ministry of the Catholic schools. It's the mission to evangelize too. So how have you come to understand that, you know, as a principal and, 
you know, evangelizing, meaning like forming missionary disciples, helping young people and faculty understand their role to proclaim Jesus Christ and however they're called to. Like, have you seen that in the school situation where you see young people really responding to the faith? So we have. Um, we have at, uh, at St. Elizabeth, we are blessed to have nuns as part yeah. of our staff. Yeah. And, um, and it's, it's really one of the things that makes us unique within the diocese. Uh, and so um, our nuns are uh, our religion teachers. They teach the majority of our religion classes. And uh, we do have um, a lay religion teacher as well. And uh, so the, th the three together um, do a fantastic job of um, encouraging our students to be involved in the community and and, you know, yes, we have the requirement of service hours, right? right, right. And and so so that's the tangible box to check. Mm -hmm. But the the faith part of it is, you, you know, what does it mean to me as a student yeah. going out and serving the community? Yeah. And and we do that in several ways. Um, we have we have done everything from you know book drives mm. to um, making cards. Uh, I know right after, uh, right after COVID hit, so mm -hmm. that following school year, um, we, uh, one of our service projects was for the students to make thank you cards uh, uh, for all of the medical professionals. And so we brought yeah. that to the local hospital. Uh, we also brought that to, uh, there were cards made for uh, the local nursing home. Yeah. And, um, but, you know, even, even our organizations like, uh, you know, our, our student organizations like Beta, yeah. you know, they're going to do a food drive, you know. And so there's lots of service opportunities for our students to be involved and to put their faith in action, yeah. so to speak. Right. And to let it shine out from all mm -hmm. that they receive, especially with the blessings from the sisters, you know, and their theology teacher to mm -hmm. really embrace the faith, encountering Christ through that, and then pouring out into the world, you know, around them. So we're gonna take a break because we're at our halfway point. And when we come back, we're gonna continue that conversation about the gift of Catholic schools and kind of how you've experienced that in your role as principal at St. Elizabeth's. Stay with us, we'll be right back in just a minute. to Catholic Life as we spotlight ordinary people with extraordinary faith. We're here with Dr. Andy Kling, principal of St. Elizabeth Interparochial School, and we're continuing our conversation about the gifts of the gift of Catholic school. And there was one part where I was kind of researching this show, and I was on uh, your website, and uh, one of these, these quotes stood out for me. So I want us to kind of dive into this, because I really feel like it gets to the heart of the missionary activity and evangelization in Catholic schools. And Here's a quote. The greatest accomplishment we can achieve is to help each student develop those talents given to him or her by God. We intend to instill in each one a deep-rooted concern for eternal values, which will lead to all 
lead all to everlasting rewards, right? So that's big. So we're going to break that down yeah, a little bit. There's a lot bit. of stuff in there. So there's the accomplishments, the end in mind, the hope, right, mm -hmm. is that each student helped them develop their talents that are given to them by God, right? And so how do you see that happening in Catholic schools? How do Catholic schools help young people develop their talents given to them by God? So in speaking with, with talent specifically, I think um, not only is it our job to recognize talents within the children, it's also our responsibility to remind them that those talents are given by God. And then the third piece is how can you use those talents to glorify God, right. you know? Wow. Um, and so uh, with COVID coming along, there, there are several things that, uh, that were shut down briefly. Right. Um, but I know specifically with St. Elizabeth, one of the things that we're looking forward to is, is getting back to the, the music and the arts, yeah. you, you know, um, we were able to do so specifically speaking for St. Elizabeth, uh, we do a living nativity. Uh, we do a living way of the cross uh -huh. and it's, it's all student performed and, uh, and led by the students. And, uh, and so that's just a small piece, a small example of, of how we, uh, we grow and encourage the talent. Mm -hmm. um, I know the diocese has a, a, an art contest for the Christmas cards and, and we, <laughs> yeah. do, we do that, but we also have a, a, a school-based Christmas card that we'll pick oh, uh, a piece of art from. Yeah. Um, and, uh, and so one of the things that we want to get back to this year uh, is is the music and oh, and yeah. the singing, you know, and uh, and so that's that's one additional element that uh, you know now that uh, now that our guidelines will allow us to do that, yeah. that's one of the things that we want to get back running. How cultivating that, Tim? Sure, yes. that was really missed during that time. Well, the next part of it talks about it says we intend to instill in each one a deep rooted concern for eternal values. Um, which will lead all to everlasting rewards. So basically you're saying that life is important mm -hmm. and eternity is really important. Yes. Right? Yes. So how, how do Catholic schools help instill that in young people? Like, why is that? How does that happen? So, you know, there's a lot of different things that, that involve our, our Catholic faith. And, uh, and so... It, you know, they say life is a journey. Yeah. And, uh, and, and so there are many different entities uh, within our faith that allow us to uh, be successful in that journey. For example, um, you know, take prayer and reflection, yeah. okay? There are many different ways that our faith teaches us to pray. We can read the sacred scriptures we can spend time uh, in adoration. Uh, we can spend time in, you know, verbal prayer, be it, you know, a prayer given to us or one that, that we come up with in conversation with God on our own. Um, and these are just three of the, the many examples that, that our faith gives us. And I think as, as Catholic educators, we are charged with, the task of introducing all of these many different elements mm -hmm. to our children because the end goal, I mean, let's face it, God makes us all different, yeah. right? Yeah. Um, and, and so my, my personal prayer of choice is, is the rosary, yeah. you know? Um, and, and that's where I go to do my prayer. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and so other people may gravitate more towards adoration. Right. You know, other people still may, may choose music, yeah. you know. Um, and, and so whatever that avenue is that grows your faith and provides that conversation with God, you know, uh, is based on your uniqueness, yeah. right? And, and your preferences. And if we can expose and educate, educate 
uh, our kids on what the Catholic faith offers and give them the opportunity to find the best avenue to grow their faith. That's our job. Yeah. And, uh, and th that's, our, that's priority number one, if you yeah. will. And that helps them build the relationship with God because prayer is the communication mm -hmm. with mm -hmm. God, right? And it's also through sacred liturgy. You know, there are liturgies that take place, you know, at school. There's opportunities, just like you said, doing the passion play or living rosaries or things like that that invite, you know, young people and faculty into that opportunity mm -hmm. of prayer. And so helping build that relationship with God, which is the ultimate relationship we can have in our, right. in our lives, you know, for sure. And then because of that, because of a strong prayer life, then, you know, the opportunity for growing in faith formation and academic classes, including religion, mm -hmm. theology classes, would really strengthen that component of the faith to lead us towards worship, which, of course, spills into a life in Christ, which are basically the pillars of the catechism, you know, yeah. <laughs> and you know that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for sure. And, and I think one of, the, one of the challenges that we face today uh, in educating students within the Catholic faith is, is leading them not just to the what. So we want, we want to teach them all the what's yeah. of the Catholic faith, mm -hmm. but we also want them to find a personal why. Yeah. You know, um, I was blessed to have someone uh, pour into me as a, as a high school student and, um, and relate the what, which is the rosary, mm -hmm. to, to the why, mm. you know? Mm -hmm. and, and I came to appreciate that prayer because it meant something to me. Yeah. yeah. And, and I think that is the hardest part of teaching faith. It's mm. not just about the what, and the what is yeah. very important. Right. Do, do not misunderstand what yeah. I'm saying. Yeah. But in order for the what to mm -hmm. be life-sustaining, mm -hmm. there has to be a personal connection. There has to yeah. be a why. That's to go to the heart. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, because once it's, you know, once we take in the information, process, discern, reason, right, then our faith consumes that reason, right? So we embrace it with love. And, and, and it's a calling. I think the beauty of the faith too, especially in the Catholic schools, is that you just don't hear about the faith in religion class. You know, it permeates, you know, it permeates the, the, the system, mm -hmm. so to speak, the community. And um, the Catholic identity, you know, is really important in that respect because it's not something that we, we just go to, it's becoming. You know, it's becoming more like Christ. It's be embracing, you know, the faith that's been given to us as a gift um, through the gift of Catholic education and being able to take that completely, share it with our young children, you know, as they grow up into, you know, young adults and then adults and go out into the world to proclaim the gospel in however way they do and however God calls them be it an athletic director or a trainer, <laughs> all the way to a principal, mm -hmm. for sure. So it sounds like to me that your faith plays an important role in being a principal, too. Like, it's just as important for you sure. to sustain and grow in your faith, um, as, long, as well as faculty, you know, members that serve, adults that serve the community, too. Um, so share a little bit of that, of how your faith sustains you as, um, as a, just a, a man of God, you know, in your everyday life. Like, it sounds like it's very important. Like, the rosary is important to you, you know. So that's something that, you know, you gravitate to. Right, right. And, and my faith is important to me. Um, but one thing that, that I know is, you know, my faith, my faith doesn't make me perfect. Yeah, um, right. You know, I am a, We're striving I am, towards perfection. <laughs> I am a very imperfect person. Yeah. And, yeah. and I understand that. And yeah. that alone justifies my need for my faith even more. Mm -hmm. Because I can't be anything yeah. if I don't have God first. Right, right. And, uh, and so that's where my faith begins. And, you know, um, 
from there, my faith supports me in and guides me in in what I do. Yeah. Um, because my actions aren't my actions alone. Right. You, you know, there's right. there's an entire school. Yeah. Uh, and and so you, you know, I've had many conversations with with Father Tommy, and um, you know, things that should cause an undue amount of stress. You, you know, um, not that they don't cause stress, mm-hmm. but that stress is soothed ah. and no. tempered. Uh, right. By the faith. Absolutely. Yeah. By the faith. Don't because, have your anxiety. Because, right? because, because, because be I, can, I can have faith that God will provide right. or I can stress about something until it's solved. Until you and, realize it. <laughs> and, and, and look, at, at, at the end of the day, yes, I love my job as yeah. principal. You yeah. know, especially now that, that I'm in education and Catholicism. Mm, like, mm, I am mm. in a job within my faith and my profession. Yeah. And, uh, but even still, because one of the things that, that, I said as a, as a teacher, you, you know, a teacher is just a part of me, but it doesn't define who I am. Right. You, you know, right. I'm defined by bigger words yeah. like Christian, mm-hmm. husband, father. Son of God. Right. Yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. You, you know, and, and Catholic even, yeah. you, you know. Um, and teacher is just a small part of that. Right. And, and now that I'm a Principle. Mm-hmm. Principle is still just a small part of that. Yeah. It's a very important part of that, but it's still just a small part because at the end of the day, when I leave school, I go home to a family. Yeah. And and one of the things that that I've really tried hard um, to rely on my faith to do is when I leave my office and you know my chair sits right underneath a uh, a crucifix. Uh-huh. And so when I leave my office, I leave it there. And and you can say it's it's cliche, it's elementary, but I leave everything there. Yeah. And I know that Jesus will watch over all of the troubles yeah. and all of the th- undone things, mm-hmm. and they will be waiting for me yeah. the very next day. And as children of God, we place ourselves at the mercy of the foot of the cross as the love pours out from the cross for us too. Absolutely. Yeah. Thank you so much for sharing your faith with us. Well, yes, ma'am. Yeah. It's I'm been so a pleasure. happy. Yeah. And thank you for serving the Catholic schools and your role as principal. And, um, and gosh, yeah, really good luck this year. <laughs> thank in, you. In your new year as you began. Thank you. And thank you for having me. Absolutely. Thank you for being with us on Catholic Life. Until next time, may God bless you and grow you peace.